Hello guys, welcome. Today we will be explaining monetary policy and let's have a quick reminder. This is under demand side policies. So the government, when they want to achieve their objectives, they would want to increase or decrease aggregate demand either by using a fiscal policy, which we explained before, or by using a monetary policy. So as a quick reminder, these are the three main macroeconomic objectives when the government, they want to increase or decrease aggregate demand in an economy. They will be using specifically fiscal and monetary. When the government would want to increase or decrease aggregate supply in an economy, they will be using supply side policies. So remember, the government would want to do this in order to achieve their macroeconomic objectives. So when I am using a monetary policy, we got to remember that the government touches on three things. Either they will be changing the money supply in an economy or the interest rate or the exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate, it is done by the central bank in order to influence the level of aggregate demand and economic activity in an economy. What we will be doing right now, I will be explaining each point by itself. So let's see how the government could achieve its macroeconomic objectives using the monetary policy. Again, they could either be using an expansionary or reflationary monetary policy in order to increase aggregate demand, or they could be using a deflationary or contractionary monetary policy to decrease aggregate demand in an economy. Now, let's see. When will the government will increase aggregate demand? They would need to decrease the interest rate in order to increase borrowing, and decrease savings. Now, in both cases, what happens is our income will increase. Therefore, it means we will have more money to spend, and this would lead to an increase in aggregate demand. Also, another way the government could touch on money supply in an economy. In order to increase aggregate demand, they need to increase the money supply. Now, let's see when the government uses a contractionary fiscal policy, what do they need to do? At that point, they would need to increase the interest rate in order to... What, will what do you think will happen to borrowing here? Borrowing will decrease because they would have to pay more on the loans. And also, they would be saving more in order to receive a higher interest so at that point you gotta know that most of the money is not with us it is saved therefore we have less income with us which would lead to a decrease in aggregate demand also the government could do something else other than touching on the interest rate they would decrease the money supply in a in an economy when there is less money in an economy, what happens is people will be spending less. Therefore, our aggregate demand will decrease. Now, I would like to highlight on one thing. Sometimes the government does not touch the interest rate at all because and so they want to remain it. Uh, they want to keep it unchanged because governments, they want to create certainty, which can make planning easier in the country. So when there is certainty in an economy, this will encourage investments to occur. And you got to remember, when people invest, what is happening? We are increasing economic growth. So what do I mean by money supply? How can a government increase money supply? First of all, the government can be increasing money supply by printing more money. Now, this is a straightforward way of increasing the money supply. Also, what happens is the money could be buying back government bonds. So at that point, it gives commercial banks more money to lend to their customers. So when we have more money, because we borrowed more money from the bank, it means we can be able to spend more. Also, the 
the government can encourage uh, lending, as we said. So the government would make, for example, um, um, easier um, paperwork in order to take loans from the bank. Okay? Remember, increase in money supply, that would lead to increase in aggregate demand. So the government would be using an expansionary monetary policy. Now let's see how does exchange rate affect aggregate demand. When I am talking about the exchange rate, you've got to understand that I am measuring the value of one currency against another currency. So if I say there is a fall in the value of a currency, this means that I am talking about a decrease in the value, or I will say that it is devaluated, or I can say it is depreciated. When a currency is depreciated, you've got to understand that it would make exports cheaper, and so cont other countries would find my country cheap, so they would start importing from me. Therefore, I will be exporting more. However, because my currency is less in value, I would find imports much more expensive. Uh, this will cause the volume of exports to rise, which was which would positively impact aggregate demand and cause a subsequent economic growth. Okay, so this you gotta understand that it would lead to an increase in aggregate demand. When I am talking about a higher exchange rate, this means I can say that there will be a reduce in net exports. So in other words, I am saying that there will be a decrease in aggregate demand because a lower exchange rate tends to increase net exports, increasing aggregate demand. So when I say um, a higher exchange rate, you've got to understand that it would reduce net exports. So here, foreign price levels can affect aggregate demand in the same way as exchange rates. Also, you've got to understand that sometimes a government may instruct its central bank to change directly the country's foreign exchange rate. So the government may want the price of the exchange rate to decrease. When this happens, it is encouraging a rise in exports. So also an increase, an increase in interest rate will decrease aggregate demand in encouraging an increase in foreign exchange rates. Foreign exchange rate. So at that point, you've got to understand that net exports will decrease because there will be an increase in the price of exports and a decrease in the price of imports. So as a summary, this is the monetary policy again. you got to understand the government will be using it in order either to achieve economic growth in an economy or to fight inflation. But at the same time, sometimes when the government is increasing growth in the economy, it would cause inflation. Okay? So let's have a look at the conflicts when the government is trying to achieve it. One macroeconomic objective, unfortunately, that would lead to another problem. So, for instance, when I am talking about unemployment and inflation, here the government could be using an expansionary fiscal and monetary policy. So, at that point, I can say that the government will increase its expenditure and this will increase job opportunities. So we got to understand that there will be more income, demand will increase, but prices will increase because people are demanding more. Therefore, that would lead to inflation. So did you see what just happened? The government was trying to fight unemployment and they achieved that. However, it led to inflation. Therefore, as we said before, sometimes governments they just leave the economy as is. They will use no policy at all. 
also you gotta understand that when we have more income the demand again is increasing production will increase and that would lead to economic growth now let's have a look at the second macroeconomic objective when the government is um, achieving balance of payments and economic growth it will usually use a deflationary or a contractionary fiscal and monetary policy because when they are doing that what's happening is the income tax will increase therefore imports will decrease so the balance of payment here will improve so let's have a look at it what's happening income is less demand for domestic goods will increase that would lead to competition therefore prices will increase and here we will be having a deflation we will talk about deflation in the next video so as income decreases demand for domestic goods will decrease production will decrease and we will have less economic growth so when they achieve this one it led to a negative economic growth that's it for today's lesson i hope you enjoyed the video thank you and don't forget to ask me any questions in the comment section have a lovely day